Thank you, Mr. Richard Chandler uh, from BP Energy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity to come and talk a little bit about the Cape Henson Wind Farm project. Uh, I don't know how much you know about the project, so I'll assume a little and start from the top and we can tend to fast forward and slow down as we go through the presentations. Um, it's a short presentation. I can elaborate if you want along the way. So uh, this is a brief project agenda, uh, program agenda for today. Just want to talk a little bit about the project, what the history of it is, um, go through where we are in the permitting process, the Oracle 10 permitting process, is the state level permitting process, um, talk a, a bit about the outreach efforts we've done to date, uh, and then some of the benefits that stem from the project. Uh, my name is Richard Chandler, I'm with BP Wind Energy, I've been working on the project since last year, I've been with BP for uh, over six years now, and working on uh, project development. So. This slide, you might be able to see it better on the screen than you can from your handout, but um, what I want to do is just take one step back before we get to the and that is to talk about, in February of 2012, we actually acquired the neighboring project of the North. So we were working on uh, the Cape Vincent Wind Energy Project, which is basically represented by what you see here on this part of the diagram. To the north of us, there was another developer working on this portion of of the, of the project. And in February 2012, we bought that out with the idea to optimize the project across the footprint. All the turbines that we're proposing here, and there are 124 in total at this point, so, uh, are proposed for the town of Cape Vincent. When I inherited the project, the project to the north was 51 turbine locations. And I had, been, I had been given 84 in the south, so a total of 135 turbine locations. Looking at the feedback we've received to date and spending the bulk of last summer working on the project uh, and trying to take a lighter touch, touch in the landscape, we heard that the, one of the more sensitive resources was the St. Lawrence River. And so we pulled back the project footprint from the St. Lawrence River. We eliminated about 11 turbines. So we took it down from 135 to 124, about 6 or 7% of the total project. Uh, not a trivial decision. Uh, this graphic is meant to show the sort of before and after of, what the, of the culmination of work done in the last year and trying to optimize the footprint. The black dots represent turbine locations, and the blue lines in between represent either access roads or uh, collection lines, both of which will be buried, if not all. Um, the red dots represent the new proposed footprint, with the green being the connection between the two. Again, those will either be access roads or collection lines connecting the power from the various turbines together. You can see that swath along the St. Lawrence River where we pulled back. Again, hearing the feedback from the community, that being a more sensitive resource, uh, we tried to pull back. If you were to draw a line in here, I think if you look at the town zoning line, they've got about a half mile buffer in here for the riverfront district. We're about uh, three quarters of a mile to a full mile away with where we're at now. Uh, you'll also see that we're able to leverage better technology now. Uh, the turbines are, are taller than they were before, and we're able to use fewer of them. And so you'll see, if you can, some of the lines are, you can see the clear overlap between blue and green. But by and large, the footprint is the same or smaller than what we're proposing here on the ground. So black and blue is now eliminated from the project. Black and blue is gone, green and red. And you did that because you were sensitive to the community? <laughs> any other questions on this slide? Before did you hear Sure. Oh, is this, is this an open form to the whole? It's not helpful for the location to the town and the village. That's what I, I assume. I'm happy to answer your question. I understand that there is a question and answer period in Cape Vincent from 7 o'clock until 9 o'clock tonight. Is that yeah, correct? 7 to 8 30 at the BP office. Actually. Yeah. So if there's any specific questions to this particular project in Cape Vincent, we're encouraging anybody that has those questions to ask them other than the town or the village board because this presentation is for the stakeholders, the town and the village of Clayton. If there are stakeholders in the room from the town of Clayton, can they also speak? No, this is just for the town and, and the village board. Well, how much bigger are they? You said the larger so you could uh, make, make uh, lesser of them. Yeah, so the, um, the, the turbine size we're looking at for the two projects before average around 425, 430. Mm -hmm. Here we're looking to go upwards of 495 feet or so. Will they be visible from the river? Uh, yes, they will be. In fact, <laughs> we're, doing, we're taking uh, 
photos for a visual impact, mm -hmm. both onshore and offshore. We've been coordinating with various stakeholders to take a number of offshore photographs along the perimeter of the table. How tall are the ones on uh, Wells? On, uh, well, I, you know, I don't know the exact number. I'm sure they're more than 400 feet, though. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm sure they're, t they're 400 feet. Oh, no. I don't think so. Uh -huh. Those yeah. turbines no, are 300 of them, and they're, uh, they're 37 watts each. This is a comparable turbine to what we're proposing. They're 37. Between 1.7 megawatts to 3 megawatts each. So the, the 120, one, one question we get frequently is, uh, you've got 124 turbine locations. How big a project does that result in? So we're looking at various different turbine technologies, anywhere that can vary between 1.7 megawatts per turbine and 3 megawatts per turbine. So for us, we're more concerned about project locations and, and finding the right technology for the project. And what the project size is that falls out of that would be the result. So you take 124 turbines times the megawatts per turbine, and that would be the project size. So roughly what we've been presenting publicly is 200 to 285 megawatts in size. And the reason why you have that kind of range is because we're still looking at various turbine technologies. Um, again, this is that sort of blue riverfront district that I mentioned before. Um, and again, I can provide more copies of the larger size of the map. All this information is, uh, this, the copy of this map is available on our project website, capepensilwindfarm.com. Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. You say that you move those turbines back because you're sensitive to the folks along the river. What, how far back did you move them? And, and Ian, what did you accomplish as far as your thoughts of sensitivity? <coughs> yeah, so um, again, if you were to draw an, a, a line from here to here and, and sort of draw across the board, you'd see we're about three quarters of a mile to a mile away now. Okay. As opposed to? Uh, I think some of the Germans may have been, yeah, somewhere along that half mile. If you go back to the previous slide. I'm sure each site's distinct as far as geography. I mean, some would be more visible. Geography, um, just the type of impact it would have either visually or from the environmental standpoint. So, you know, if we talk about the project, you're absolutely right. It's almost like a 124 individual project. Each one has to have an assessment associated with it. So, um, from the permitting standpoint, so again, just to take another step back before we go forward, the, the St. Lawrence project actually went through the entire permitting process at the local level, uh, the secret process, all the way through uh, draft environmental impact statement, supplemental to final. The Cape Vincent project was somewhere around halfway through that point where they did draft and supplemental. Uh, the town was working on revising its zoning law and went final with its zoning law in August of last year as did the state level permit process, the Article 10 process. And when we looked at those two pathways, we thought the Article 10 process was a better approach for the project. And so in September of last year is when we started down that road. And all, all of that really started with a, it's called a public involvement program plan. It's kind of a, a stakeholder outreach program. Um, the timeline there is once you submit that, that PIP, it's called a public involvement program plan, uh, 150 days have to elapse in order for you to carry out more stakeholder outreach. Uh, so if you had 150 on top of what we submitted, which was September, that takes you to February. Um, that's, the, that's the minimum amount of time that has to last before you can take the next step in the architect process, which is the scoping state. It's called the PSS, preliminary scoping state. Um, we did not submit it in, in February, we submitted it in March. And there's another holding period at that point. It's about 90 days, or it is 90 days, I should say. Uh, and so if you were at 90 days on top of March, that would take you to June. Um, we actually went through a public comment period in between there where the public was able to comment. We submitted that on March 29th, the public was able to comment for 21 days. We then submitted comments to those comments in response via 21 days. So the last sort of public filing on this was, was May 10th. And the point where we're at in the process now is um, pre-application, preparing the application and going through what's called a stipulation process. And that just means to the extent that there are items that you can agree upon in advance with the various stakeholders, document them now and get them out of the way so that when the application comes along, the review of it is, is uh, expedited. So we did receive one of the other mentioned <coughs> comments about the, the project size and 124 turbines and, and what size project drops out of that. We did receive a comment about the, the backdrop that was used, the base mapping. Uh, we had used something more similar to what you'd seen on the previous slide. 
It was a, a U.S. Geological Survey uh, background. It's what we typically use for our project. It's very common in the industry. Um, some of the feedback we heard was that some of the old, you know, some of the old street names were on there, and um, people thought it may not have been representative of what the town was. So we actually switched the base map um, last month to what you see here is for aerial photography based. Um, you know, different mapping backgrounds, you, you gain some information, you lose some information, you, you, don't see, you don't see topographic lines on here. Um, some of the street names can be hard to read. So it's different viewers have different preferences on how to view things, but we won't, the most recent change we made on the mapping was this, and this is what's available on our website. The other thing I wanted to point out before, before we get into all the various steps of public outreach that we've gotten into. Could you um, tell us what those things are in the town of Lyme? They're little dots, I can't read it from here. Yeah, as I mentioned before, this is on the, the website, so all those are, are available there. It's an available on our pro, uh, project office as well. So just to quickly go through, and we have a packed agenda today. I went through the various steps that we were talking about before. The PIP was submitted in September. PSS. Opportunity for intervener funding. So we had to put $100,000 or so, just short of that, to the state and parties that were interested in applying for intervener funding, the point of which is to inform the record on the project, um, apply for that in the state, we pay for that, and the state uh, allocates that funding to various parties that are interested in applying the record on the project. There's a second round of intervener funding where we put the application in, which we're targeting for fall of this year. You see that here, and that'll be approximately uh, you know, 200 to 300,000. And then once your application is submitted and being complete, there's a 12 month review process. So we would anticipate in the fall of 2014 or some, summer, 20, uh, summer fall of 2014 are ruling on the application. We've got two slides left and I'll we'll go through them quickly. Uh, these, these are all the steps of things we've been taking along the way to try to keep the public informed and garner feedback on the project. We have our office in downtown Cape Vincent. Uh, we've had community outreach meetings. We've had one just before this session. We'll continue that after the session, as, as you mentioned before. All the fact sheets that I sent to the, uh, the town, the village, in advance of the meeting, all those are available for download on our website if you're not able to make the meeting. Uh, so these, these are just a handful of things that we've been doing along the way. And then the last slide, uh, I want to just reinforce some of the economic development benefits that would come. Jobs during the sort of direct jobs. Uh, potential components of supplies and materials, the indirects of you know, lodging and food of having uh, workers come at peak construction, you look at somewhere anywhere 250 to 300 workers, and that's uh, worth nine to 12 month construction time frame. If we had some kind of seasonal challenge, that might go out to 15 months. Uh, property taxes were paid in lieu of taxes, and then those who were directly participating in the project, uh, landowners were benefited as well. So we probably have about 100 to 150 landowners involved with the, the project participating. And if you uh, were to aggregate all those payments, they'd be more than a uh, million dollars per year. <coughs> that's really the time, so it's, it's not trivial. Sure so yeah, that, that's kind of my last slide. I think uh, the biggest takeaway for the, the town of Clayton is that you know, we, we're here for any feedback that you may have. We're happy to come back. We're happy to have another session with you and the village of Clayton as well. Um, I think from your perspective, that you know, looking at the project footprint again just very quickly, um, the town of Cape Vincent and the town of Clayton border here. Uh, there will be locations within the town where we'll be able to see them. So perhaps visual impact is is, uh, is the item that would be of greatest concern in the town. But we're certainly open to uh, whatever your feedback is. There are 41 different dimensions of uh, study across our project. So uh, no stone will be left unturned. So uh, again, appreciate the opportunity to come and present and have to answer any questions.